Hey, what's up guys? It's Chuck from Brady Adventures and it's time to do the walk around of our Overland fridge install. And as you can see, I have some help today from B and Mac. Well, I'm not helping you. You're not helping oh me? Oh my gosh, my head feels so dizzy from rolling down the hill. I'm going to make sure to have links to all the stuff that we use for this installation down in the description. If you enjoy this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. We chose the Alucab fridge slide uh, in the ARB 47 liter fridge. There was a Black Friday sale from ok4wheeldrive.com and in that deal, you could get an Alucab tilting fridge slide, an ARB 47 liter fridge, a transit case, and a battery monitor for a pretty good price. We weren't really sure that we wanted to do the Alu Cab, and we kind of went back and forth on it, but it turns out that this thing is pretty awesome. It's simple, it's light, and it works really, really well. It's got two spring-loaded pins. You pull these, and then there's a little detent that holds it back, and you just kind of lift up over that, and then it folds down like that. One of the things we have found that we love about this ARB fridge in particular is your ability to pop the lid off. It comes off really, really easily just like that. And when you are loading up groceries or anything um, that you want to get in there, being able to pop that lid off and just get your stuff straight in there and then push the lid right back on is really, really convenient. And here we have this LED light that lights up really, really nice when it's a little dark. You have this little divider that you can pull out. This whole cage also can be pulled out. So that really makes it convenient for different kind of loading options. And this area is always gonna be a little bit warmer. It's right over the compressor and they call it the dairy tray. This has a single strap that goes through a slot in the front and a slot in the back. It comes back, wraps around, hooks up on the ratchet on the rear. I, I like it, it's simple. The biggest problem is the way that you have to thread it takes a little bit of time. If you wanna be pulling this in and out of the vehicle, it's just gonna take a minute to get the strap on and off. On the fridge, you have a power button. This basically just turns it on and off. Um, and then you have a few settings that you can do right here. If you push this, it shows you the actual temperature and you can decrease or increase that. And you can pick Fahrenheit or Celsius. And then this high, medium and low setting is for when you want the fridge to cut off if your battery's low. So I have it on the high setting, but really I could have it on the low setting since I have an auxiliary battery powering this. So a very common question is why put in a dual battery system like this? And it's really so that you can run your accessories without having to worry about your battery going dead. But this accessory battery that I have right back here is powering the fridge in the back. I have a 15 amp fuse on that and I have 10 gauge wire, which is a little bit more than I need. And I have it ran uh, pretty simply down through here and up into the threaded connector. But if you didn't have an auxiliary battery, you'd wanna have it on the high and that would make sure that you wouldn't run your battery down and you would still be able to start your vehicle. Really simple, not a lot of complexity. This latch um, is really pretty stout and really easy to open with one hand, which is nice. Really love the look of the limited edition transit case. Back here, you can see the sensor attached and that's feeding a signal up to the remote monitor. For the fridge monitor, I haven't quite figured out exactly where I'm gonna mount this thing. So right now I just have it sitting uh, in the center of the console here. And once it connects, you can see it shows the temperature inside the fridge, the voltage that's going to it, and it also has this little light up here by the power. If it's orange, that means the fridge is off. If it turns green, it means the fridge is actually running uh, to cool things down. Below is a check light here, so if there's some kind of problem back there, that's gonna light up red. You can see I'm at 12.9 volts. Um, as soon as I start this thing up, it's gonna repower up, 12.9 volts. And that was the switch connecting and now it's gone up to 13.9. It usually runs between 13.9 and 14.3. One of the biggest questions that I had is how I was gonna run the power cable. So here you have it. What I noticed on some of the South African and Australian builds is they have a cage built around their fridges in most cases, allows them to pack stuff in and around it. Not really sure why those aren't uh, more readily available in America, but I'm thinking about fabricating one. Most of those systems, the guys have uh, something built in to bungee the cord to the top in the middle of the cage, and that 
makes it so it can accordion out pretty easily. But we have our threaded connector back here where the wire plugs in and then can screw in tight. And then that routed up to our handle up here with a little bungee that just gives it a little bit of a slack and ability to pull. But you can see there is no uh, tension on this wire at all right now. It took me a few times, so I tied a knot to get that bungee right where I needed it to be so that it was the perfect length where there wouldn't be any tension and it also wouldn't hang down so far that it was gonna get tangled up or pinched in the slide at all. So that has worked really, really well. I realize this might be in the way if once we get some gear in here, but probably not too bad. And once I fabricate some kind of cage, that wire will be mounted in the same way up into the cage. The other thing I decided to do was put a window shield up uh, in this rear window. First couple days that I had this out, there was sun coming in through this window and really heated up the top of it, even in the cold weather. And I had some of these little window shades hanging around, so I just cut template out with some construction paper and I used some little double-sided uh, Velcro stickies to put it on here so I can take it out if I, if I want to, but right now that keeps all that energy reflecting back out of the vehicle and keeps the fridge nice and cool. I think probably the biggest thing to point out about this refrigerator is that it has been way more useful in daily life than I thought it was gonna be. This is quite a bit of an expense to get one of these into your vehicle. If you're not full-time living out of your vehicle and doing some long expedition, it can be a little bit hard to justify. Really though, this has ended up being really, really great. When we're tailgating, uh, instead of rushing home after you do some grocery shopping in town, you can throw it in the fridge um, and uh, even go do some other things for the day. It really becomes a thing that we depend on. I have not actually determined how much draw this is gonna have on the system. It has been so cold. It does run from time to time, especially if sun's coming in the vehicle. But in general, it hasn't dented the battery at all. So right now, got a little bit of beer in there and uh, it's staying nice and cold. Hey guys, thanks very much for watching. Please let us know in the comments if you have any questions about our fridge install, our slide install, or how it's working for us. We'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel.